Hello and welcome to the Pretty Good Gaming Daily Triple, your no shit gaming news video. That's three news stories in one video with zero faff. And first up, as YouTubers like us scramble to find worthwhile news stories this week, we're praying that finally the PS5 will be officially announced just so we have something to talk about. While we're not quite there yet, we are one step closer. Sony have added the PS5 to its official website, thus taking the first steps of the console's marketing campaign. On the webpage, users can sign up to a newsletter to be updated with all future PS5 related content, or alternatively, just subscribe to us. The webpage also says the following, we've begun to share some of the incredible features you can expect from PlayStation 5, but we're not quite ready to fully unveil the next generation of PlayStation. Sign up below to be among the first to receive updates as we announce them, including news on the PS5 release date, PS5 price, and upcoming roster of PS5 launch games. While this is nothing major and realistically is little more than an announcement announcement, it does signal the start of the PS5's introduction, so it's safe to assume there'll be more info very soon. In other Sony news, the PlayStation manufacturer just closed its recently established studio in Manchester. After forming in 2015, the studio was in production of a VR title, but it didn't actually ship anything before the closure. All the staff have been made redundant, with Sony claiming the reason for the closure was part of our efforts to improve efficiency and operational effectiveness. No doubt Sony's decline in profits and revenue, a symptom of being in the twilight of the generation, has had an impact. Sony has closed multiple UK studios in the past 10 years, including Studio Liverpool, Gorilla Cambridge, Big Ben Studios, and Evolution Studios. London Studio, the dev behind PSVR title Blood and Truth, and Media Molecule, who is less than a fortnight away from launching its game Dreams, are the last bastions of Sony developers in the UK. Redundancies are abundant in the industry these days, especially as the generation draws to a close. Hopefully everyone from Manchester Studio can find work elsewhere ready for the next gen which will soon be upon us. We've all been caught up in the Warcraft 3 controversy, but let's not forget about Fallout 76, the holy grail of juicy news stories, although this time it's in the news for something good. Fallout 76's Wastelanders update is finally coming to players, if there are any left, on April the 7th after missing its original release window last autumn. The update will launch simultaneously on PS4, Xbox One and PC, including Steam, and will bring fully voiced NPCs to the world of Appalachia. The lack of NPCs in the game when it first launched was one of many, many criticisms levied at the game, with detractors arguing their absence left the world feeling soulless and empty. In addition to the introduction of NPCs, the update is meant to bring a brand new main quest line, new locations, new enemies, new weapons, and a new reputation system. The update will be free to all owners of Fallout 76, however, this is Bethesda of course, so there are extra paid options for those who feel so inclined. Buying the Raider content bundle or Settler content bundle will win you themed cosmetics for your character and camp, but you'll also get a planter which will allow you to grow crops when no dirt is available. They just couldn't help themselves, could they? They just couldn't resist charging you money for gameplay altering features. They just have to seize every last opportunity to nickel and dime their players. Bethesda hasn't specified how much these content bundles will cost, but they will be purchasable alongside the update and will be included in the Fallout 76 Wastelanders Deluxe Edition release. Despite numerous controversies surrounding the game, from bugs and missing features to dodgy monetization, the game does still have a dedicated following. Last month, one user created a maths camp with a twist. Solve the sums or be killed by radiation poisoning. Vault 101 Man Guy built a school to lure people in, then locked the door behind them before forcing them to do a simple maths puzzle to figure out the door code. He also built a maze and hid a death claw inside, a murder church where people are burned to death if they're not hacked to bits by him, and a player oven. That last one is pretty self-explanatory. That might give you all the info you need about the Fallout 76 player base. The murder traps I can deal with, but forcing you to do maths? Absolute psychopath. <laughs> It's easy to get hung up on the negative parts of the industry, but it's important to look at the positives when they appear. The ESA are doing just that by launching a new scheme to promote the positive impact of gaming. The ESA, or Entertainment Software Association, is the trade association for the gaming industry in the US, and is made up of executives from Activision, EA, Ubisoft, Warner Bros, Epic Games, basically all the big baddies of the industry. This new campaign for positivity, called Game Generation, aims to showcase the power of play in building community, forging inclusivity, and inspiring creativity. The program comes in response to the ESA's data which indicates 73% of Americans play games to relieve stress, 63% agree that gaming improves problem solving, and 52% agree that it builds collaboration and teamwork skills. The ESA will also be launching an online platform to educate parents about the benefits of gaming. ESA CEO Stanley Pierre-Louis said, Game Generation is about celebrating the more than 164 million Americans who love video games and the positive impacts that they can have not only in players' lives but across communities, families, 
families, industries, and in tackling societal challenges. Now that all sounds like a great step forward for removing the demonization of gamers and gaming within the media, but forgive me for being more than a little cynical. The ESA is what keeps loot boxes and predatory monetization in our games, because its members are the ones who make those games. This just looks like a distraction, showing people the good stuff so they ignore all the bad stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if one of those positive impacts of gaming will be their own monetization. Look at how positive all our games are. They teach your kids transferable life skills, like gambling. And that's it for today. If you enjoyed this no shit format, make sure to give it a like to give the video a boost. Hit subscribe and the bell if you want to be notified of future installments. Toss a coin to your YouTuber over at patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming to help continue this work. I've been Henry Cooper. That's all for today. Bye for now.